In this video, I'm gonna cover a really common problem with pivot tables. In this case, it looks like my pivot table is set up correctly. It's got my, my sums, my totals, my category, I got quantity sales, everything looks correct. But this is just based off the data that I'm feeding into this pivot table. If my range is wrong, if I'm not referencing everything, then I could be missing data or I could be referencing the wrong data. And you, you know, just by looking at the pivot table, that's not obvious. So let me show an example. If I go under the pivot table analyze section and select change data source, it's gonna show me what's, what's making up this pivot table. So it's going up to uh, from A1 to X51,000. So if I go to the bottom of my data set here, it actually goes down to 51,291. So that means I'm missing 291 rows of data. So that's a problem. Now I could go in and manually change this to include that, but that's obviously a short term solution because say you add data to this in the future and you're gonna have to go through the process again. And if you forget, your numbers are gonna be wrong. So there's two ways we can get around this issue. And the first one is if I go back to that orders tab, I'm just gonna convert this into a table. So click by clicking anywhere on my data set here, I can click on insert, select table and leave this ticked off as my table has headers. You'll see Excel automatically detects that I'm going to, to row 51,291. It's going to automatically detect how big my table is. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now, first glance, it looks like all, all that's happened is that I, I've applied some formatting and some colors to it, but that's just the default um, a table formatting in Excel. I can rename this table to something more useful such as let's say TBL for table and then data. So one benefit of using a table right away is that it makes it a lot easier to reference the range. And if I go to the very bottom, if I do control down, you can see I'm go, it's automatically created my range up to 51,291. So I go back to my pivot table. And now if I go to pivot table, analyze, change data source, I no longer have to worry about putting in 51,291. Instead, I can just type in TBL data. Simple enough, because I've got that named range. And see, now my number's updated. And now if I go back to change data source, it's got that, it's referencing that table. So it's a lot easier to reference it. Another advantage is when you're using a table, if I go to the very bottom here, let's say add another row, one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll notice it added that highlighting here. And that tells you that the table is automatically expanded. Now, if I go here, you know, you can see I've got this little indicator here to say this is where that table ends. So if I wanted to expand it manually, I could stretch it out as I see fit. You know, if I added another one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Again, we see that, that blue highlighting. So now it's gone to 51,293. So I go back to my pivot table, pivot table analyze, change data source, still referencing table data. It doesn't tell me how far down it goes. But if I go down here, because my table's expanded, it's including those recent, recent entries that I've added. So it makes it really useful in that case to not have to worry about whether I've updated my pivot table range or anything like that, because I'm always going to be referencing that that table, as long as that table expands, then you're fine. Now I'll show you an example of when it might not expand. So if I go to the my orders tab and let's say I just copy some values here, copy and paste, Excel might not auto always detect that I've expanded my table. As you can see, th there's no highlighting. And this is why the highlighting can be really effective because it'll say, hey, wait a minute, this is just a regular white formatting. There's nothing been applied here. So if I want to expand this table, I can just drag this down to make sure that it captures those items that I just copy and pasted. So if I'm manually entering it, it's, it's fine, but if you copy and paste, it may not pick up everything. But by expanding it, now we don't have to worry about our pivot table because if we do a refresh, it's gonna factor in even those blanks in there. Again, back to pivot table analyze, change data source, it's going to include 
all those values that we've just put in there. So it's very effective and very easy to, to set it up that way. But I'm gonna show you another way that we can do this as well. So I'm gonna go back to the orders tab and this time I'm gonna get rid of the table. I'm gonna table design, convert to range. So I'm getting rid of the table, right? Even though the, the formatting has not, has not changed, this is no longer a table. I don't see the, the table fields or on, on the ribbon anymore, right? So I could change the formatting, but it's, it, it saved the formatting, but basically this is not a table anymore. So there is another way that we can still reference this in a pivot table, because there might be some, some instances where you, you know, for one reason or another, you can't set up a, a table. And, but you still wanna have a dynamic range uh, for your pivot table. So I'm gonna go back to the orders tab here and I'm actually gonna create a named range for this, basically to capture and expand automatically just like the table did. So I'm gonna go to formulas, select the name manager, and I'm gonna hit a new named range button. And now what I'm gonna do is create a new named range. I'm just gonna call this data set you can call this whatever you want. It's just whatever you're gonna reference it later on. So what I'm gonna do is use the offset function. And how the offset function works is we specify a starting point for our data. So in this case, it's gonna be cell A1. And with the offset, you can specify whether you want, it, want your range to move rows or columns. In this case, I don't. But what the offset function can also do is you can specify how big your range should be, both in ro rows and columns. So because I don't wanna actually move my, my starting point here, I'm gonna set the first two arguments for rows and columns to zero. And now for the number of rows in my data set, I'm gonna use the count a function. What this does is counts how many values are within your range. So you wanna select the range that's not gonna have blank values. So in this example, Column A should not have any blank values. Every, er, er, everything should be filled in there. So I'm gonna use the count A function to select all of column A, and that's gonna tell me the number of rows that have data in, in column A, and that's how many rows my data set should be. I also wanna use the count A function for the next argument, which is the number of columns. In this case, I'm gonna look at row A1. This has all my headers in here. So it's gonna count how many of them are filled in. Again, it's important to make sure that there's no blanks, whatever range you're selecting. I'm gonna close this, hit okay. So now to recap, we've got my offset function, starting at A1, offsetting no rows, no columns, counting the number of rows in by, by looking at column A and how many values are filled in, and then I'm determining the number of columns by looking at row one to see how many values are filled in. Again, so, so it's important that there's no blanks in, the, in whatever ranges you select. Because otherwise, if there's a few blanks, then these calculations might be a few columns or rows short. So I'm gonna close. And actually, let's double check to make sure I've selected that right range. So if I click in here, you can see this outline. It'll show me how far it's going. So it's going all the way to the end here. And if I go to the rows, to the bottom, it's also gonna collect, um, uh, count the number of rows cor correctly. So now if I hit close, and let's say again, let's uh, add another value here. So now it, my, my table didn't expand, this is not a table anymore. But if I go to my name range again, my data set, Let's go to the very bottom here. You can see is including that latest value that I've added. So by using that offset function, it's automatically gonna expand and include that latest value. So just like a table is automatically expanding, the offset function expands as well. So again, it's named data set. So I'm gonna close, go back to my pivot table and change the data set, data source. And again, it's reverted back to this original range just because um, you know, that's what my table was set at. And so if I go back here, you know, it's not picking up that latest value that I added just because my t table stopped here when I converted it back to range, that's what it left me at. So now I'm gonna type in data set, okay? And now 
Let's check my data source again, just to make sure. So again, we're just referencing a named range here. If I go to the very bottom, you can see it's including that value that I just added. So again, it's important to make sure that whatever anchor point you're using to count the number of rows or the number of columns, that, that, that those columns and rows always are gonna have a value. You don't wanna include one that has blanks. You know, if I included column H instead of column A, you can see I've got blanks in here that would cause a problem. It's like not gonna give me the correct count. But if I know there's always gonna be a value in column A, I, I can safely use column A to help me determine how big my data set should be in terms of rows and row one to count the number of headers and how far wide it should go. So now if I hit okay, now my pivot table can refresh and it's automatically gonna pull in all those values. So again, there's two ways we can, we can address the issue of the pivot table range not being um, large enough or, or not including everything. Um, the easiest way is to set it up as a table, your data set, by converting this into a table you have the benefit of seeing the formatting and then when you add rows you can see that it's expanding or if it's not expanding you can manually do so by by dragging the table to make sure that it's including everything so that's the easiest option uh, because you don't have to mess around with any complicated formula but if you can't convert it into a table or you know it's not a possibility then what you can do is use a name manager, create a named range, and use that offset function. Spend some, spend some time learning how, how, how to create this function. It's not terribly complicated, really. We just need that starting point, and the first two arguments are zero, and then the next two are just using the count A functions, looking at the rows and then the columns. And then the offset function know, knows how large uh, it needs to expand to be to and cover our entire data set. So by using that, you can still get a, get around um, not having a table, and you can still use that in your pivot table. So that way, if you go to refresh, you, you know your data set's always gonna automatically expand based on the data that you've entered. Because there's nothing more annoying than going to your pivot table and checking to find out that, oops, you're missing rows, or it's not capturing stuff, or why did someone enter stuff, and it's not in there, because you know, from looking from afar right now, you might think the pivot table looks fine, but if it has an expander, if it's not including all the data, then it's incomplete and potentially has has the wrong numbers calculating here. So that's where making sure that your data set is correct at the get-go can be really useful in making sure that it's easy to update and is, um, you know, gonna be e easy to maintain going forward because the last thing you want to be doing is updating your your pivot table or your data set and then always having to go back and change your data source to make sure all the rows and columns are correctly accounted for